A um, couple things. As I walked in, I came in late, one of either you or Dr. Fauci were saying that the reason that we're not saying that natural immunity is protective as is a vaccine, even though there's recent publications showing that six to eight months out, 92% of those with natural immunity have T cells, B cells, and antibodies that would be considered adequate to protect. And indeed, B cell continues to climb. That we don't have data. Now, in your response to Mr. Casey, you just mentioned that CDC has access to tens of thousands of EHRs. And I've been told that HHS or CDC has access to patient identifiable data as to who test positive. So I do that as a prologue. If we don't know that natural immunity confers protection against future infection, it's because we've decided not to look. Because I've learned that there is a cohort of people that we know have been previously infected. We've got the bench research showing that the uh, triad of antibodies, T cells, and B cells are there, and that 92% of them are still there at age at six months out. So why don't we, why have we not done the research showing that natural immunity confers protection against recurrent infection? Yeah, thank you so much for allowing me to clarify this point because I understand, I understand the question. Um, first of all, let me just reiterate that our current stand after reviewing 96 papers and a scientific brief on this issue is that everyone who's been previously infected should be vaccinated. But that's um, not my question. I agree. So, so, and part of the challenge here is, as you know, the infection-induced immunity and the biases associated with retrospectively looking at the data. Several of those papers that we reviewed for that brief have demonstrated that the kind of disease that you had at the time you had it matters. Um, did you have disease a year and a half ago? Did you have, were you an older Can person? Can I stop you for a second? Were you? We could do this prospectively because you know who is actually, apparently I'm told you've got patient identifiable data and you would be able to say, okay, six months ago, we're going to start everybody infected within the last six months and be able to follow their EHR prospectively to see this. I mean, theoretically, CDC has the ability to do this right now. Yeah, that too would have its own biases. So one of the things that we have demonstrated in the scientific brief is that asymptomatic and mildly symptomatic people who might not present to their providers, might present to an urgent care clinic, who might not be recorded in their own EHR, likely have less robust protection than those who've been severely But that, that could be established prospectively if using the data that you have. And you could even say... If you had symptomatic infection, you don't need to be vaccinated. We would consider you immune. You don't have to be subjected to the mandate. But if, if you we had, had data, if we had data that demonstrated a correlation of protection, Dr. Fauci already mentioned data that they're working on to look at correlates of protection, not just in antibodies, but as you noted, in T cell function as well. So if we were able to document a correlate of protection, we absolutely could but prospectively follow. But this paper follow. that I'm reading from, CD, from NIH speaks that there is durable memory of the virus up to eight months after infection in 95% of the people who recovered, including B cells, which continue to climb, T cells, and antibody. And I'm also saying you could do it clinically because we have data that's patient identifiable that we could go back and look and see if they were exposed. They could be in a hot spot like Louisiana where you know they're being exposed. And then you would see, not just by lab data, but empirically. I'm a, I can tell you the American people intuitively understand this, and they feel a little bit like we're being willfully blind to it. I have limited time. Let me just ask you something else. What percent of CDC employees are vaccinated? We're actively encouraging vaccination in all of our employees and doing a lot of education and outreach in order to get our agency fully vaccinated. And the, but the percent? I, I don't have that for you today. I'm told that 75, to, um, some north of 75% of CDC employees at headquarters are still working remotely. Is that correct? Um, we are following uh, regulations through HHS and the federal government. No, that's not my question. I, I apologize to be rude, but, but, but I'm asking a very straightforward question. I've been told that north of 75% of employees at, at, at CDC headquarters are working remotely. Is that correct? Senator, I don't actually know the number off the top of okay, my head. Okay, when you so look I'd down the to... hallway, are there empty desks? Are over 50% of the desks empty? Senator, I don't have the numbers off the top of my head. What I will tell you is that we're working closely within HHS and the administration to follow the governmental rules for return to There the was a recent GAO report 
that shows, and released in the last two weeks, that there's been no coordinated response on the federal government to get people back into work. Now, if there's any agency that, since we have teachers in Fulton County are back at work, that the caseload of COVID in Fulton County is about 88. At its peak, it was 606. Uh, if what I've been told by someone who, frankly, kind of knows, that people in laboratories are not showing up. I have no clue how people, how laboratory workers who presumably are vaccinated wearing PPE would consider themselves eligible to stay at home. Uh, I say this because I just want to echo. We've got to lead by example in the federal government. If our public health agencies don't have enough confidence in the immunization and in the PPE to go back to work fighting infectious diseases, there's going to be a lot of undermining of, an, of a willingness to further fund public health. We absolutely have our essential labs back at work conducting their essential research towards this response. And um, you, we are following the regulations and providing technical assistance and technical, technical support to the federal government for return to work policies. Uh, one more thing, I had, uh, Angus King and I had sent a letter dated February the 25th asking about genomic surveillance. We've still not received a response. You referenced it in your early remarks. Both Senator King and I would appreciate a response. We'll get back to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, I yield. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go vote. The next four senators I have in my order are Senator Baldwin, Marshall, Rosen, and Murkowski. I will return. Thank you, Madam Chair. So we're here today to discuss the road ahead on the pandemic response. And I fear that that road will be a rocky one if we forget the lessons that we've learned thus far, particularly when it comes to our ability